Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. So uh, today we have a light talk on a, a Java memory model. My name is Dmitry, and uh, I'm working as a software engineer in Nepal. And uh, uh, let's start our discussion. So, uh, first question, oh, why do we need uh, knowledge about uh, Java memory model? So, uh, uh, we know that uh, Java is a, a language with a, auto, uh, with a memory auto management. And uh, unlike in C++, we do not need to uh, destroy objects uh, by hands. But uh, uh, let me uh, show you a couple of uh, slides. And uh, in the end of uh, my talk, you will understand that uh, uh, Java mem uh, memory model is uh, uh, has influence on uh, uh, code behavior. So uh, please uh, take a look at uh, first example and uh, put uh, in chat plus if you think that this uh, test will uh, pass and uh, minus if you think that this test will uh, fail. Sorry, chat, uh, chat is not available for. Uh, uh, it is available, but uh, we have a delay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think we can go further. Uh, yeah. Publish. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, next example. Uh, we also have some uh, code. That we made uh, some uh, modifications in data, and uh, after that we check if these uh, modifications were applied. Uh, and uh, uh, these uh, slides uh, uh, look uh, similar to each other, but uh, they have a uh, big difference. And uh, let me uh, jump in uh, uh, memory model. Uh, a Java memory model uh, consists of uh, four uh, major components. Uh, stack, uh, heap, uh, garbage collector and uh, metaspace. And there is uh, also a fifth uh, sub uh, component, stream pool, but it's a um, uh, part of uh, heap. Uh, now let's uh, take a look a close and uh, at stack and heap. Uh, a stack is a, a memory area. Uh, and uh, each uh, method uh, which is execu uh, executed in Java has uh, its uh, own stack. Uh, heap is uh, mm, a main uh, object uh, storage and uh, all uh, objects uh, except uh, 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 class metadata uh, are created and uh, stored uh, in heap. And uh, this uh, uh, during code execution, these uh, areas are interconnected uh, with each other, and uh, this uh, example uh, demonstrates. It. So uh, we have a method uh, with name uh, code, and uh, our first line is uh, creating new object. Uh, we see that uh, uh, new object was created in heap, uh, but a reference to this uh, object is uh, put uh, in stack, in the bottom of stack, because a stack uh, 
uh, as follows from uh, its name, uh, uses uh, last in and first out uh, principle. Uh, next object, uh, next line, uh, we create uh, string name uh, Java. And uh, this object will be put into string pool. Uh, because uh, string pool is a, a special heap region uh, where strings are kept. Uh, and uh, it happens uh, because of string immutability. And uh, GVM has ability to optimize amount of uh, memory allocated to similar strings. So if we had uh, uh, one more line of code, uh, name one uh, equals Java, then uh, we would uh, have uh, uh, another reference uh, name one, uh, which pointed to the same string. Uh, this process is uh, called uh, interning and uh, handled by stream.intern method. And uh, the last uh, line uh, of code on this uh, slide, uh, we have uh, integer equals uh, 50. And uh, uh, there is a, a primitive and uh, we do not create anything uh, in a heap because uh, every primitive in uh, Java is uh, uh, stored only uh, on sec and uh, after return from a method uh, we have no access uh, to this value and uh, it, uh, if we return from method we uh, have access to objects if we have another references. So that's the main uh, difference. Uh, uh, here we uh, uh, can see that uh, heap is uh, not a, uh, one large uh, a piece of memory. It is uh, separated into some uh, areas. And uh, the reason of this uh, separation um, is uh, if we uh, have uh, a large uh, application with uh, uh, 16 or 32 uh, gigabytes of uh, heap, then uh, uh, garbage collector has to iterate over uh, each and uh, every object in heap and uh, uh, and uh, and uh, find objects uh, which are uh, not used and uh, this is a very time consuming process and uh, it will take additional cpu uh, that's why uh, gvm engineers uh, uh, I use uh, conception of uh, weak uh, generational hypothesis, uh, which uh, states that most objects survive for only a short period of time. Uh, for example, uh, you have a Spring Boot application, you make some uh, request, you receive uh, data, and uh, after that, all uh, objects related to that request are not uh, used anymore and can be cleaned. And uh, in uh, all generation, uh, some uh, core uh, components are kept, like uh, uh, Spring uh, concept, uh, uh, Spring uh, context, uh, uh, a pool of. Mm, a database uh, connections and uh, etc. So, and uh, uh, the last uh, part of uh, memory, uh, which we'll uh, take a look at, is uh, meta space. 
Uh, as you can see, uh, Metaspace is uh, not part of HIP, but uh, uh, prior to uh, Java 8, there was uh, additional uh, generation uh, where uh, class metadata was uh, kept. Uh, we know that uh, Java, everything in uh, Java is uh, object, even uh, classes which are used for uh, creating objects as uh, templates. So uh, a permanent generation was a, a special place for storing this uh, metadata. But uh, because heap is uh, limited uh, in size with uh, settings, uh, this uh, could uh, lead to out of memory error. And uh, uh, solution was to uh, separate uh, permanent generation into uh, metaspace and uh, move it uh, out of heap. And uh, uh, in this case, uh, metaspace is uh, grows uh, automatically by default and uh, limited only with the uh, operation system. Uh, we have less risk of uh, out of memory, uh, but still, if we need, we can uh, limit metaspace also with uh, some uh, settings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, a couple of words, I think, about uh, garbage collector. Uh, uh, garbage collector is a special component for cleaning uh, objects uh, and uh, uh, it, uh, it works in a uh, usual uh, in last versions of uh, Java it works in parallel with the uh, application. Uh, there are five major implementations of uh, Java uh, of garbage collector, and uh, we can uh, specify uh, which version to use uh, manually uh, in uh, uh, in console. Mm, I think uh, that's it. Maybe uh, somebody have uh, any questions regarding uh, previous slides? Uh, yeah, there was uh, actually one question. Uh, what uh, version of Java is uh, this related to? Uh, the, uh, this is related uh, to Java 8, uh, to Java uh, 8 plus versions. So starting from uh, Java 8 and uh, all uh, next versions. Uh, Okay, uh, thank you. The next question is, uh, can we control where to create our objects, uh, heap or stack? Mm, no, uh, no, it's not possible because uh, uh, if we are creating an object, uh, it is uh, created in heap. If we are uh, creating a primitive, uh, like here, we are writing uh, int num, equals 50, it is uh, created uh, on stack. OK, great. Uh, and the last question that we have for now, uh, which type uh, of data uh, is contained in Metaspace and why we need it? Uh, are we uh, first, uh, our Metaspace uh, Mm, yeah, uh, uh, let me think a bit. Uh, we uh, use uh, uh, cl uh, classes as uh, prototypes for objects. So uh, when we write uh, public class and etc. Uh, etc., et we are uh, creating a template for objects. Uh, which will be created from uh, this class. Uh, 
Uh, the thing is that uh, this uh, class is an uh, object uh, by itself. And uh, the, uh, but uh, this object is not uh, kept in a uh, heap. It is uh, kept in uh, Metaspace in Java 8. And uh, prior to uh, Java 8, it was uh, kept in uh, a permanent uh, generation here, which was which was a part of heap, but uh, this approach could uh, lead to out of memory error. And uh, this uh, storage for uh, objects of uh, classes was uh, moved to a separate metaspace out of heap. Is it clear? Uh, I think due to the delay, we will know it soon. Uh, and uh, actually, we got uh, one more question uh, about uh, the first uh, two slides, uh, tests that you showed. Uh, could you please uh, explain which of them will fail and which will work and why? Uh, that was the uh, initial uh, question to make this uh, talk uh, a bit uh, interactive and uh, uh, Oladislav uh, will uh, explain it uh, a bit later. I can, if no questions, I can uh, pass uh, word to him. Uh, okay, I don't see any more questions for now. I think we will be able to answer all your new questions a bit later. But, uh, yeah, let's switch to Oladislav. Okay, I'm stopping sharing. Oladislav? Your turn. Is my screen? So can uh, you see my screen? Yeah. yeah, I can. So uh, yeah, hello everyone. So my name is Ladislav. I also an IPAM engineer. And uh, I'm going to explain some uh, uh, of the examples, some of the tests that uh, were shown all earlier. So we're going to begin with uh, some theory. First, uh, we're going to talk about some primitives. Uh, just for you to remember primitives in Java, uh, such types as, uh, for example, uh, integer, string, uh, boolean, uh, etc. So those are uh, uh, that are beginning with the lowercase letter. So, if we're talking about that, uh, they are not uh, they are kept uh, kept in heap, and uh, their values are not like referenced. Uh, they are getting copied. So, uh, for example, if we pass them into the method, um, their value getting copied in uh, another uh, variable. So, and after the method, uh, uh, those variables are considered as uh, local, and they are just getting. Uh, swiped up, cleaned up. So um, here's what I'm talking about. Uh, that is uh, the example from earlier. Uh, it's a test. Uh, I'm going to give you just a couple of seconds to look it through. Uh, think about yourself, uh, think for yourself uh, uh, whether it's going to fail or pass uh, this test. Uh, and uh, I'm going to explain, I'm going to go uh, through it with you. So uh, in the very beginning, we just uh, create two uh, different uh, variables, uh, both of them of primitive type, uh, though uh, both of them are uh, integer, so x equals 1 and uh, y equals 2, as we can see in the first table on the right. So uh, what happens uh, when we enter the method uh, modify? Uh, first of all, um, the value of variable x getting copied into x1, as we can see on the second table on the right, and uh, value of Y getting copied into Y1. So now, as uh, we can see, as we enter the method, just entered at the top of the method, we actually have like uh, four variables. So next, uh, when we're entering the body of the method, uh, what we have is uh, we're changing the values of two 
uh, variables that are created in the method. So we're changing just x1 and y1. So we're setting x1 to 5 and y1 to 10, as you can see in the third uh, table. And uh, also, as you can see, this method is void. So we're not returning any value. So method, method just ends and uh, x1 and y1 is like copied values. Those are considered as local variables. They are just getting uh, cleaned up. So we're after the method, we're just returning to the first table. We just have x1 uh, equals 1 and y equals 2. And those are unchanged. So uh, if we checked is it uh, with assert equals, that is actually right. So it is actually 1 and 2. Uh, then, uh, if we're talking about passing by reference, so uh, if we're using non-primitive types, uh, we're using object. Um, so uh, if we see an object, we can actually think of it as an actual object and some set of references to that object. So uh, here's what I mean. Uh, there's uh, a second example, uh, which was provided by Dmitry earlier. And uh, also, I'm going to give you just a couple of seconds and uh, go through with you. So, um, as it was said earlier, uh, this test like uh, is similar to the previous one, but it's actually like very different. So here's what's happening. Uh, first of all, we create um, two objects, uh, A and B, and we're getting references to it. Uh, we create objects with the word new and it's referenced by a and b variables so when we're just entering when we even not entered uh, the method modify we still have uh, just two references then we enter the method uh, modify at the very beginning uh, we're getting copies of not objects by but references so we're getting copy of reference a into a1 as you can see and b into b2 b1 so now uh, we can have uh, we have only two objects a and b and it's referenced uh, each of them for example a is referenced by a and a1 and b by b and b1 so now we have two objects but four references uh, what it means is uh, first where when we're getting into the body uh, first of all uh, we're changing the value of uh, a1 we're incrementing it uh, we're setting num plus plus that means we're changing its num uh, we're adding one to it but as we can see a1 and a are referring to the same object so after the method if we check it with a sort equals we can clearly see that a num is now two so uh, that assert equals is true that we will not fail we're changing the same object they are all references uh, to the same object so but in case of uh, b1 we can see that in the body we're creating uh, the new object that is called uh, b1 and uh, now with b1 we're referencing to its own object so now uh, b a reference into object B and B1 to object B1. That means if we're incrementing B1, we're doing the exact same thing as with A1. We're doing increment, we're uh, saying num plus plus. That means we're adding one to the num into object, but we're changing only object B1. As you can see uh, on the picture on the right, we're changing its object, not uh, that is referenced by reference B. So if we after the method uh, check it with the assert equals b num is still one we're not changing it so it's also is true so that's uh, the tests explained so that may be it maybe you have any questions mm, i see some more question uh, in the chat uh, from a uh, unanimous, uh, uh, can we pass a primitive by a value somehow? Uh, like in uh, C sharp or C++. Uh, actually, uh, we are passing primitives uh, by value. Uh, uh, I think uh, he meant, uh, can we pass a primitive by reference? I, as far as I know, C sharp and C++ allowed. Uh, no in java it is uh, not possible uh, yeah okay uh, thank you uh, one more question uh, is about uh, metaspace uh, what happens if we have so many classes that metaspace gets full 
Uh, I think uh, there will be uh, two scenarios. If we uh, uh, do not set any limits uh, uh, to uh, metaspace, then uh, metaspace will uh, grow automatically uh, uh, till um, until um, um, operation system will uh, have uh, memory. And uh, if uh, if we actually set some limits, then. Uh, uh, I guess we will uh, get uh, out of memory error, but uh, I have never seen it myself. Uh, yeah, actually, I'd like to add that uh, we will have a uh, garbage collector run. Uh, it will, well, Java will try to clean a metaspace a bit. Uh, so uh, if you're interested, you can read about uh, class of loading uh, in Java. Uh, so in some cases, classes can be removed from the metaspace, but uh, well, not always. And yeah, I agree that uh, if uh, metaspace is full and it cannot be cleaned, uh, we will see some uh, error like out of memory. Uh, OK, and uh, the last one for now, you can ask your questions in chat. We will answer them. Uh, can you give some more examples about Metaspace if it's possible? Uh, Edgar, sorry, you didn't specify what exactly did you want to uh, know. Uh, so just uh, what is stored in uh, Metaspace? Uh, I think I can try to answer this question. Uh, Metaspace stores meta information about classes. So uh, it is uh, basically any kind uh, of information about classes that GVM internally needs. Uh, so when you run a Java program, it reads uh, classes that are available to it and uh, stores uh, the information inside this Metaspace. And later it doesn't reference uh, files on the disk because it's well very slow. Uh, instead, it reads information from uh, the meta space. Uh, OK, uh, any more questions? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, OK, uh, if you don't have uh, any more question uh, that let's call it a day. Uh, if you have any, you can ask them in our Slack channel. We'll try to answer them. And yeah, thanks, Dmitry and Vladislav. Uh, I think it was really helpful. Thank you, too. It was uh, interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks. Bye. Bye.